Well, here we are for another session of neighborhood training. Uh, we're going to continue on working in the geographical center of Falmouth. We've covered quite a lot uh, over the past few sessions. Uh, last week we worked in the Mayor's Pond area. This week uh, we're going to begin to uh, pick apart the uh, Pinecrest Beach uh, area of Falmouth and, and this week specifically we're going to work on the what's known as the backside of Pinecrest um, the Sandpoint Shores area of uh, Pinecrest and more of the western side if you will of uh, Jenkins Pond and it kind of connects up very well with uh, what we were talking last week, we were talking, uh, we were in the Mayor's Pond neighborhood area. And uh, that, of course, is down here. Here's Mayor's Pond and Spectacle Pond and the Mayor's Pond well site. And this being all town-owned land here, there's a, a pathway that connects right into the Mayor's Pond well site from the Pinecrest area. Um, so it just kind of flows from one, one area to another uh, and into Jenkins Pond and then up over here we have Deer Pond. Uh, so this is the, uh, this of course is Jenkins Pond, it's a pretty large, one of the larger ponds in Falmouth and uh, to the kind of the northeast is Round Pond uh, over here. Um, and the area we're going to look at now is the Sandpoint Shores area, which is this way here. We're also going to look at um, Deer Pond Road and also the Crooked Meadow uh, section as well. And since um, these maps are not necessarily um, the greatest in the world from Google because of the, the uh, uh, foliage and all that, but the one thing I do want to point out and we can see them here, just um, just two little um, things when we are talking about Sandpoint Shores. Uh, this all around Pinecrest Beach has, the, has a few private um, beaches that are run by each association and they have different accesses and uh, one of them is right in this area here, right almost at the foot of, of Rock Hollow Road over here is Rock Hollow and Pinecrest Beach. They have a private beach right over here. And then the other one is uh, down over here, as you see at the end of uh, Binnacle. Uh, there's another area, another public beach area here. And the reason I want to point those out, uh, just like we have the Pinecrest Beach Association has their beach right over here in the uh, Pinecrest. And then there's quite a few um, a little public access points and everything over here. But the reason I want to point that out is that oftentimes we'll get called for water rescues or we'll get uh, in the summertime and this would be an access point to the water but also an area where people you know are going to be you know out there in the summertime. The other uh, thing to point out is in the wintertime for uh, ice rescues or cold water rescues uh, this is going to be an area where most people are going to you know, head out to do skating or some other um, ice activities are going to be leaving from a public beach. So it's just good to be aware that these these are in that area. And we'll just pull back uh, lightly and switch over to um, one of the other maps here. Okay, so this is the um, area here we mentioned. Here's Deer Pond and uh, connected to uh, Jenkins Pond. And just to give you the locality, of course. Um, now here is um, you know, Deer Pond Road. Uh, runs all the way out to Blacksmith Shop. Now it is a um, dirt road. It's about one car wide. Um, so in the town does grade it pretty well. But it's uh, just something to be... Uh, aware of that it is a dirt road and it's pretty narrow 
It does have hydrants um, down its length. For quite a few years it didn't, for years it did not, um, but it currently does. Um, but there is a section in here that um, is not really all that long, but there is a section, there's more towards the Pinecrest Beach end and more towards um, the Blacksmith Shop Road end and not so many in the middle, but it's for uh, dispatchers to be aware of. Now the back entrance into Stan Standpoint Shores, which has been really a benefit to the headquarters response um, over the years, um, has been this uh, crooked metal access. Um, not too many years ago, probably 10, 15, 20 years ago, uh, this section of Blacksmith Shop Road was a dirt road, unpaved um, and really unmaintained. So it was, it didn't really enhance the response from from headquarters. But um, in that within that time period, of course, it's been paved and improved. Drainage is good, so it really gives us a, um, a tremendous opportunity for headquarters to get into this area of Pinecrest that is a little more difficult for Station 5 to get to. Um, so headquarters will get in there pretty fast into most of these areas just going down Gifford Street getting on Blacksmith Shop and coming into this um, coming in Crooked Meadow. Uh, this backside of Pinecrest for 25 to get there they have to go in Pinecrest Beach Drive and, and come around um, and of course John Parker slows them down as well. But it is it is slightly tricky in that we need to know that this is uh, Crooked Meadow coming in. Let me just see if I can zoom in and actually get the road name on there. I know that we uh, all know it, but sometimes I, I think it's good to see it in there. We go. Okay, so Blacksmith Shop Road, right near Brush Hill Circle over here. Uh, we have Crooked Meadow comes in, and then you have to take a little turn on shag bark uh, to get on to Sandpoint Shores Drive. And uh, then this is Spur Lane right here. There's only a few houses on Spur Lane. And then we come in Sandpoint Shores Drive and we connect up to uh, Pinecrest Beach. And this here is Rock Hollow Drive here. And and one thing I do want to point out is we were coming around uh, from, yeah, here we go, this is better, from the Mayor's Pond well. Um, there's a gate in a pathway uh, right in here. And we will, let me see if I can pull that up right now. I believe it's this one here. Let me just back out a little bit. Okay, this is the uh, gate in the pathway from the Pinecrest beach area into the Mayor's Pond well site and the day on to this day when I took the picture the uh, gate is actually open it should be closed um, but as you can see there's a hydrant there and there's also another one over here but that is the pathway in from that area um, right across from Owl's Nest Road and now Owl's Nest is right here Okay, that's Owl's Nest Road. And one thing that we will need to know is, especially for dispatchers and also for the responding personnel, that this area right in here of uh, Lakeshore Drive and Owl's Nest is blocked off. Okay, we did have a fire in here a few years ago at the um, Colleen Coyne's house. And, you know, it, we had to come in you know, this way here in this area here was all uh, dead end. But if you came in the back side of Pinecrest, you'd have to drive all the way down the deep wood and then come in uh, Lakeshore Drive. So we have to remember that for dispatchers and everybody else, that's blocked off. And for all intents and purposes, when we're going to be talking here about Sandpoint Shores uh, in the neighborhood, it's going to begin roughly right around here at the Owl's Nest Road and then run around. Uh, Pinecrest Beach Drive. And now we will uh, take a look into this area here, the Happy Hollow uh, area. 
there we go. Uh, where we have happy hollow of a sandpoint, and happy hollow runs all the way down and all the way back up to Pinecrest Beach. And then uh, stub toe crosses through. And that's fawn circle way down at the end. And this is cottontail uh, circle right here. And let me just see if we can get in a little bit more to show these uh, road names on the other side. I think it's okay, good. They're pretty, uh, pretty easy to pick up here now that we're close enough in. And then on the other side of Pinecrest Beach is uh, we have Binnacle that comes across and the White Caps Drive comes all the way through. The town has improved this uh, road through here, White Caps and Binnacle area. The uh, couple of years ago there was a lot of flooding in there and the road was, uh, was not too good and now they've um, improved it quite a bit which is good. And there we go, good. Map is refreshing. And then we have Pinecrest Beach. Drive is the main road going around. And the other part of uh, Sandpoint Shores is uh, Sidewinder and Pinion Way. There we go. Okay. And uh, Pinion running up over here and then Sidewinder around the back over here. And then this is uh, Lakeshore Drive north right in here and then there's Callahan Way and Candle Pine Circle and that's about where the Sandpoint Shores um, neighborhood or the association that is in there uh, pretty much ends right in this area here these these folks are in Sandpoint Shores and, and these folks are in Pranker Beach Association uh, then, as you can see, there are hydrants throughout, um, and what I will note as well is that you can see these house lots are quite small. They're probably only quarter acre house lots. Um, I think most of the houses do give enough room between them so we wouldn't have fire communicate from one building to another. Uh, however, for these house lots here, which are a lot narrower, um, you could have that. So just something to uh, be aware of. And now we will take a quick shot here. This is just the overview. As we can see, this is the, the neighborhood configuration. And it is quite dense. As, as we'll see, we're talking approximately 300 uh, single-family dwellings. And uh, they're all wood frame. I don't think I saw a construction method besides wood frame in this area, and it is residential, single family. But as you see, we can see the, the crooked meadow, shag bark, sandpoint shores cut through here. Uh, I wouldn't recommend using Deer Pond as a cut through, being so uh, a dirt road, very narrow, and people don't expect much traffic on it. So uh, if I had to cut through, we cut through this section here. And uh, down over here, we have Owl's Nest road and that's uh, I just want to let me see okay that'll come around the uh, he'll just give us the hydrants here for a minute and there we go and we can see the the uh, water system network and here's that section of deer pond that is not connected through that they have one main coming up from this side and one coming down from there. There's obviously not a very large section there. Let's see, I don't know if this is the one that measures out well or not. No, okay, that's all right, not really worth it. But um, The other thing that um, we look at, if it'll do this, hmm, okay. Okay. All right. There we go. Okay. Is this gives us um, the response maps as well? Uh, okay. Well, that's okay. All right. 
So that shows us the, uh, we can see obviously there's a lot of uh, the hydrants everywhere, so that's enough uh, that we work on there. Okay, um, we'll take a look at this here. This is a, this is the Sandpoint Shores uh, Beach, which is at the end of Rock Hollow Road. And as I say, obviously, there's a parking lot across the street and the beach is there and it's, it's pretty accessible. Um, the, then I'll take a look at this house here. This house here, I, I shot from across the pond. This is a house at the very end of Owl's Nest Road. Owl's Nest Road is a lot of smaller homes, but on the very end there um, is this uh, pretty large home. And I mention that because, you know, we're dealing with this area here where, it's, as we'll see, a lot of the houses are capes and ranches, and some of them are fairly small. Um, their constructions have probably began in the, the late 1940s, but most of the construction is probably 60s and 70s, um, and they're relatively, you know, smaller homes. Here, much larger home, the end of a dirt road, um, of the end of Owl's Nest Road, is pretty inaccessible, large home. This house here is probably 5,000 square foot. And, you know, if there were a fire to it, we'd have, we'd have quite a bit, quite an issue there to, to deal with. Okay. Uh, we'll switch off to catch. Uh, now we compare that house with something about this size here which is probably, uh, if it's uh, six, seven hundred square foot, um, we're, we're lucky. Uh, and this is the predominance of a lot of houses near the pond. This is what a lot of them were, were seasonal cottages, uh, probably about just the 800 square foot. A lot of them in the Pinecrest area. Number one, we've either had teardowns and they've rebuilt another house there on a small lot, or what else is in large um, predominance in the neighborhood is folks converting a cottage into a year-round house and this is um, probably a prime example of that and uh, we do have a gas meter over here so there is gas service in that area um, the final uh, picture that I wanted to show was this here is another typical uh, branch set up in the neighborhood. Obviously this house is not used that often. Um, I, don't, I wouldn't say it's abandoned, but it wasn't, uh, certainly didn't look like it's used that often, but it's probably, uh, I guess probably a 20 by 30 branch. You know, obviously the living room's here, bedroom's in the, in the corner, but you see this style house in Pinecrest quite a bit. Um, so it must have just been, you know, popped up pretty fast in that area. Okay, uh, we'll just review um, the neighborhood itself. Okay, uh, Sandpoint Shores, usually referred to sometimes the back side of Pinecrest, the west side of Jenkins Pond. Uh, Sandpoint Shores, roughly uh, from Owl's Nest Road around over to um, Candle Pine Circle over by Callahan Way and uh, Lakeshore Drive North. Uh, approximately 300 wood frame, roughly 600 residents on that side, most of them year round. Used to be very seasonal, but um, during the 70s, like I mentioned, a lot of them were and beyond have been converted over to year round. Uh, the main road that runs through it is Pinecrest Beach Drive and Pinecrest Beach Drive runs obviously from Sandwich Road all the way around uh, and back uh, to Lakeshore Drive and um, Deepwood. Side roads are Owl's Nest. If we run around from from the Mayor's Pond side, um, the Owl's Nest, Rock Hollow, Deer Pond, Sandpoint Shores ro uh, Road, um, Shagbark, Crooked Meadow, Spur Lane, Got that whole Happy Hollow, Cottontail, Stub Toe um, section in there in the Fawn Circle area. 
and, and then on the other side, on the pond side, we have binnacle and white caps and compass. Um, and we want to look here, right? It's compass with a C. And compass with a K is way off old Barnstable and in the Ed Barr Estates uh, neighborhood. And that's where dispatchers really have to key up on it and also our responders have to key up that compass with a C or compass with a K. Um, then we have pinion in the, uh, the pinion way and sidewinder together and then uh, Lakeshore Drive North, Callahan and Candle Pine Drive um, all in that one area bounding that. Owl's Nest and Lakeshore Drive our Lakeshore Drive um, is blocked and that's on the Pinecrest Beach side and there's hydrants throughout and our response, obviously, it's the Station 5 Rescue, and then 25-21 uh, on the still, 25-21-24 on for the first alarm assignment. And then our travel distances, um, this area of town, once again, everybody's arriving there almost at the same time. Our big problem is, um, yeah, we have, is this area of town, this geographical center of town, is the area of town that is outside of our six minute response time from from any station so once we get um, on sandwich road and we get into pinecrest uh, this address is shooting for fawn circle which is a little bit harder to get to but it's a good example and all that hatchville area that center of town is beyond the six minute response time uh, here, in order to get the Fawn Circle, we're talking three miles, uh, talking eight minutes from Station 5. Eight minutes from Station 5. I did some research and found that's probably on the generous side. Sometimes we're looking at nine minutes to get to uh, to Fawn Circle. Headquarters, we have a straight shot up Sandwich Road, so we might get there roughly about the same time. This rough guesstimate says 12 minutes, but I'm thinking more um, because of the sandwich road, we should be able to get there um, by at least 10 minutes and uh, same as 25. And then station four coming from West Falmouth um, is just as, is um, about the same amount of time because they come up Brick Hill and then down Gifford Street to the back side of Pinecrest. So uh, they should be getting there. Just uh, they, they should be meeting 21 right at that Gifford Street at the high school lights, they should be meeting 21 and almost uh, tailing each other into the back. And then if we have to get uh, extra engines or one engine is out, this is where we're coming from. Station 3, you're talking 6 miles away. And then Station 2 is 7.8. So we got quite a uh, you know response time from them. But obviously if we want to get there in the 6 minute response time, we have a bit of a challenge um, for that. All right, well, that uh, wraps up this back, uh, this Sandpoint Shores neighborhood, the back side of Pinecrest. And uh, next week we'll be working uh, kind of tear apart the front side of Pinecrest. And it's an area that I found myself. I have to drive it in order to really understand it, in order to, to it's one of those areas that can be very confusing, like um, New Silver Beach or in um, the Schumann Valley. Uh, area, the uh, Fordham Circle and all that. This area for me can be very confusing as well. Okay, well, thank you and uh, stay safe and eat healthy.